Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to tell you about this sword right here. This is the Dark Sword Armory Nachenbrecher, I think is actually closer to how you say it correctly, but Nachenbacher is how it's stuck in my head, so it's what I'm going to call it for the rest of the video, and I'm I'm sorry in advance if that bothers you. Uh, it bothers me a little bit, but I can't unstick it from my brain, so I gotta, I gotta roll with it. Uh, do know that this was sent from Dark Sword Armory for the purposes of review or general shenanigans in the videos that I make. Uh, it's a second hand, or not second hand, a, a factory second example, so it may not be representative of what you get from Dark Sword Armory, which is the reason I'm going to do a kind of general overview and not the full review treatment, though uh, at the same time it's pretty similar, admittedly. Uh, the other bit, which will be obvious as you see me move it around, is that I don't study historic European martial arts. Uh, I'm an enthusiast, not an expert, not even a student in that regard, but I do study swordsmanship that does orient itself around sabered blades of a two-handed variety with a single edge, so uh, it's not completely unfamiliar to me, but it is admittedly out of my wheelhouse. Anyway, the uh, point of this video is going to be an overview. I will do some cutting with it of a basic variety, not too extreme. Uh, and then I'll evaluate bits, bob, fit features, all that kind of stuff. And I will put links in the description down below if you're interested in purchasing one or finding the weapon dynamic computer stuff or specs or yada, yada, yada. So all that stuff is down there. Anyway, on with the overview, review, review, review. Yeah. All right, so as I do, I often start with a pommel, and this one is complex. In fact, the entire hilt is complex and nuanced and has some pros and cons that I'm going to elaborate on for a minute. And the pommel here, if I want to call it that, even though it's not quite a pommel, but kind of is a pommel, uh, is, is nuanced and complicated. It has swells and dimension and all sorts of stuff that from one an aesthetic purpose I, or an aesthetic perspective anyway i really appreciate i like uh, the small little rim that runs around the bottom of the pommel the peen is not necessarily gracefully put on but secure and does what it's supposed to do and it doesn't stand out and it doesn't hurt my hand there's no sharp ledges on it or anything like that if i hold the pommel from the downside or the the end bit if you will uh, it also has some some swelling and taper to it that is just in, in a way kind of elegant it, it has depth and curves in in spots and and embraces your fingers if you hold it down by the pommel at the same time that little rim that runs around the edge is is missing a little bit of execution it has some points on it that really prevent me from grabbing the pommel with two fingers or or holding it at the bottom uh, because it hurts and one of the ledges is not quite as sharp as the edge on the sword but is is sharp and will cut you if if you if you hold it too tight so um the, the shaping on this, while aesthetically I find very pleasing and something that differentiates it from other messers on the market, it's, it's not terribly practical from a functional perspective and can hurt the user. So uh, it's, it's a bit of a mix. Now, if you hold it and don't choke down on the pommel, it's good. And also, if you were to deliver some sort of thrust or punch with the, the pommel, it, it could... It could injure somebody if you got them in the eye or the cheek or something like that. You could deliver a thrust, sink that little tip in there and pull and, and move somebody around to an extent. Um, but at the same time, I found it, to, I, I think my hand's going to be there more than somebody else's face. And I, I would like to be able to move the pommel around and the sharp bits on it are something that I think I'm going to have to rectify if, if I hang on to this sword for any length of time. So... <laughs> Uh, I like the aesthetics of it. I think it's really cool. At the same time, Dark Sword Armor needs to be a little bit more cautious around some of the ledges that can be placed in here because they they can uh, make an, an overall underwhelming experience if you tend to be handsy with your pommel. In other, uh, other bits, though, I do like how the wood panels taper in. I like that I can make out the... Uh, the the tang of the blade and how it runs through and, and that it runs all the way through and it appears to be welded into the pommel. I don't think they're necessarily made from one space, but I don't make out any welds or anything like that either. And apart from the ledges on the bottom and the point at the kind of very base of the pommel, there's there's nothing else that's uncomfortable and my fingers do very comfortably rest if I avoid that little pointy sharp bit. Uh, they do very comfortably rest in there. So with some rounding, some chamfering of edges, I think it could be a, a very comfortable pommel and ergonomic and practical as well. Um, so that brings me up to the grip. Now, in contrast, this, this grip looks a little chunky. It, it doesn't look particularly comfortable, but I've been surprised by it, honestly. When I, when I looked at it initially, it kind of lacks some of the, uh, the finger wells that I've seen on other Messer grips. It lacks some of the pegs or pins that run through that were hollow and it just it looked a little a little dumpy on top of that it's it's pretty thick and if you turn it it, it looks a little boxy at the same time so i didn't expect it to index well uh, but i was 
uh, I was surprised. And using it around indexing is not a problem at all. It stays locked into your hand, and it, it's just another way of doing it that I've, I've come to really actually appreciate. Uh, so the back of the grip is rounded and rests pretty well in the palm of your hand. And then the, I guess it's hexagonal in kind of shape, but the the sides are, are relatively flat, though they do have some channeling towards the pommel. Only slightly though, it's tough to get on camera and they're not finger wells exactly, but there are some spots where your fingers might rest. As you go up the grip though, the, the sides of the scales uh, taper in and then the tang of the blade is thick enough where your hands rest on it, it doesn't feel sharp or anything like that. Uh, and the scales are put on flat enough where there's no sharp ledges where your, your fleshy bits get tucked in anywhere. And it indexes well and it holds well and it, you can turn it easily in your hand but it, it, when you hold on to it it stays really locked in your hand all those little ledges and grips uh, work really well now i use this with a glove so i didn't notice on the pommel the sharp bit so much my gloves did i do notice it when i use it barehanded um, but in in a glove uh, while it was wet and snowy i didn't i didn't have any problem hanging on to the thing uh, so it indexed way better than i expected to it held way better than i expected to and it allowed me to feel in control of the weapon really frankly better than better than I expected it to. It just has some depth to it and some curves and some some a different take on a grip than I've I've seen before. I thought it was going to suck and it didn't. I was I was very surprised by that and I kind of enjoyed it. it made me made me kind of question how grips need to be shaped cuz inherently I thought that this going into it would be something that I would critique and babble on about how hard it was to hang on to and and well it wasn't. It was great. Some other notable bits about the grip, the scales are placed on firmly and flat. I don't see any gaps in them. Uh, there are some like errant marks or, or, you know, extra schmutz left over from buffing. I think it's a buffing compound, but I don't notice a lot of spots or open bits where the panels or scales weren't fit in properly and, and had to be filled in with epoxy or residue. Uh, generally, they're stuck on pretty flat. Generally, they're shaped pretty well. There's some imperfections, but I can attribute those to being a factory second, and maybe maybe that's why it was a factory second. There's some dings on the handle and things like that. It's not perfect, um, but all in all, it's not bad considering the price point of the item. It, it's, it's held on overall pretty well. All right, let's talk about the cross guard. And first, I'm gonna address the elephant in the room or the thing that visually throws me off the most or that I think is the, the derpiest. And that is that there is a cruciform cross guard and then like a separate little section where the noggle or an interpretation of one anyway juts out. And the fact that they're not on the same plane just throws me off visually and I don't like it. And I, I don't know why it's done this way. It appears to be cast. I don't know if it's welded together separately. Maybe it's made this way because the, the molds or manufacturing process doesn't allow it to be on the same plane but uh, it, it seems a missed opportunity. Ideally, I think the noggle is on the same plane as the cross guard. That's the way I've seen it in every other messer. It isn't, in fairness, um, something functional. I don't notice it to be a problem while I'm using the sword, but it does seem to add extra mass in the cross guard in, in a way that doesn't need to be there, and it looks, it looks funky to me. Um, apart from that, though, if I... If I look at the rest of it, there's a lot of dimension here and geometry and depth that I think is really cool. Uh, the base of the cross guard has these little kind of chevrons that, that move outward uh, to kind of a diamond-ish cross section on the on the quillions themselves. I think that's really cool looking. The the gap in the cross guard isn't, isn't great, but it's not bad given the price point of the sword. Um, I like it when they're really tight, but at the same time from a functional, from a historical perspective, it's, it's a nuance of a reviewer side of things, I guess, more than anything. But there is a gap there. It's not huge. It's, it's acceptable. But that's also, I think, because there's a Ricasso area there that hasn't been tapered or, or not too much has been done with it. Um, the noggle area, I think it would be called a noggle, but the, the part that juts out over your hand is also quite a bit different than I've seen uh, on any other messer and I'm not I'm not sure on usability here I didn't test the quillions or the noggle for durability um, it looks like it would hold up to some strikes but it also thins out quite a bit so some noggles tend to be rather large uh, in terms of beefiness of material and where most noggles that I've seen are thick this one is still quite thick but the part that kind of clamshells over your knuckles a little bit it gets to be gets to be relatively thin it also juts out quite a bit farther and actually covers my dumpy hands and so I can move my hand around and that noggle is is flirting with disaster because it has some sharp pointy bits on it that could could poke into me but with a glove or with a bare hand I can move it around it doesn't 
interfere, it doesn't catch on me, it covers my knuckles uh, and offers potentially more protection. At the same time, it gets a little bit thin and most of the noggles that I've seen are meant to deflect sword blows and are, are on the thicker side. I'm not sure how well the thinner parts of this would hold up, but admittedly, I haven't tested it. Now with a gauntlet or something like that, it, it, it's not gonna fit in there. And if I do put a gauntlet on, or at least the one I have available, which is admittedly uh, not the best interpretation of a gauntlet, uh, it does get caught in there right away and it does interfere and those little spikes kind of poke into things and catch on things and it's not, not great. But with a bare hand or with a glove, uh, even with my large sausage hands, I found it to be very comfortable and I like the protection that it offered and I like the kind of swells and points. I think thematically it all flows actually pretty well together. There's lots of little uh, points and asymmetry and stuff like that going on on this sword and I think the guard overall has lots of that going on as well. Just the two separate sections make it look a little derpy to me. Anyway, uh, I do like the overall cross guard, but those two things are, are uh, I don't know, just not, not quite, I think, where they need to be. Ideally, they're moved up on one plane. That would make it, uh, that would make it better for me. Uh, also, I, I don't, I'm on the fence about if I like this really big noggle or not. It is a little bit different. I don't mind different necessarily, but it does seem to be an order of magnitude larger than what I've seen on other messers. They don't tend to completely cover your knuckles. Uh, but Dark Sword Armies does, and it moves around and it's functional, so, or at least it seems to be. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the cross guard. Uh, moving up to the blade. Now, this one didn't come with a scabbard. Typically, they do come with a scabbard. I didn't receive one uh, with the, the shipment that came to me, so I can't evaluate the scabbard. I'm just going to move on to the blade. And some things that do stand out right away. One, sharpness on this was not bad. It didn't feel bad. It has an edge. It feels like it's reasonably sharp, but the bevels seem to be around 25 to 30 degrees, mostly around 25 degrees, and then it kind of moves around a little bit more towards the, the belly or the curvature, the widest part of the blade. Um, the the edge wasn't really sufficient for cutting, but I'll, I'll talk about that later. Uh, the blade has a pretty high point of balance as well, so it's, it's pretty thick. There's not a huge amount of distal taper here, and I think from a from a distal taper perspective, there's there's some things that could be done. Ideally, it started a little bit thicker at the cross section and tapered down a little bit more at the at the tip. And this one doesn't flex in the right spots. <laughs> if I try to bend the blade, it flexes more in the in the bottom third of the blade than the top third of the blade, and that did result in some kind of whippy or wiggly feelings in in the blade. Uh, when I was moving it around, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, anyway, suffice to say, it, it bends, it doesn't have a huge amount of distal taper. The buff on it also shows some ripples in the surface. That's not necessarily a deal breaker or, or anything terribly catastrophic, but there was an abundance of them, I would say, on this blade in comparison to some of the other swords that I've seen from, from Dark Sword Armory. Uh, the shape of the blade, the silhouette, I think is, is really kind of cool. It has this, I don't know, stereotypical scimitar-esque kind of look to it. Um, even though that may not necessarily be a thing. Anyway, I, I like the shape of it. I think it's a cool looking shape. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind if, if there was a little bit of shift instead of uh, tapering the spine to reduce weight, if there was some fullering put in instead. I think that might be a little bit more in line with Messers. So uh, like some of the, the three kind of stacking fullers that gradually or taper off at different distances, uh, I think might be a cooler way to approach the sword. At the same time, the spine tapers off on the back. It does likely reduce in the weight. Um, it swells up towards the tip. There is some distal taper to it. And overall, I, I just think it's, it's a really cool and imposing and artistically neat shape. I think aesthetically, from a silhouette perspective, this is a, a very handsome sword. Um, anyway, uh, blade-wise, uh, there's not much else to cover. There's no uh, extra detailing. The, the spine tapers off. There's a, a ridge that runs up. It is worth noting that the tip, this ridge that runs along the spine that tapers backwards, kind of runs all the way up to and through the tip. And so the tip has a slight bit of reinforcement to it. If you can deliver the tip where you want to, <laughs> then it has some extra reinforcement that likely is going to help it stay in one one piece and last a little while longer rather than becoming super, super thin. So I do, I do like that part of the geometry as well. Um, there's a little Ricasso section that if you could get your thumb up there, you wouldn't cut yourself, so you can kind of thumb the guard a little bit, um, but I haven't found the guard to be terribly conducive to actually doing that in terms of getting around the nagel and, and whatnot. Uh, anyway, those are some thoughts on the blade. Moving it around, uh, I did try moving it and doing some, some, well, some various movements with it, and I wouldn't say that it was uncomfortable, but at the same time, it almost feels like the blade 
is sagging a little bit and i think this has to do with where the taper is uh, i can't say for sure if that's what's happening but as i move it around it almost feels like the weight of the tip is is moving the blade feels a little strange in motion and it could be just because i'm unfamiliar with the shape uh, or it could be because the the blade is is flexing as i'm doing kind of basic motions and not cutting anything with it i do like that the quillions are not super long either so i only thump my head in the i thump, thump myself in the head once with them that was nice and it has a pretty high point of balance as well so it feels it feels hefty and this isn't a light sword but it's also not the heaviest sword either it's it's you know three and a half pounds ish and it um there are katana that are that heavy there are swords that i'm more familiar with that are that heavy that feel more nimble in the hands and it's it's chunky in a way that's teetering on bad um, and i think a lot of it has to do with profile taper and distal taper uh namely the the distal taper side of things and, and where where the thickness and mass of the blade is so not necessarily super fun to move around but maneuverable all the same and for a big sword uh oftentimes they do get pretty chunky this one is no exception i could move it but it was uncomfortable and i had to be very deliberate with my motions and starting it and stopping it were uh not easy but if you can move the sword around with its own momentum and you're skilled in that way which i am not then it may be uh maybe a little bit more agile in your hands than mine now i'm going to move on to cutting and this was a little bit more of a club than a sword i didn't have a lot of successful cuts with it hitting pool noodles kind of batted them around i was able to thrust with the point better than i than i thought i would be able to but that might be given my familiarity with the general shape of the sword um, at the same time the cutting just it, it wasn't in the cards and i couldn't get it going fast enough to cut through a pool noodle and when i tried to cut water bottles it, it really bashed them around quite a bit more than than cutting them unfortunately now I, I do want to point out something that was, is kind of neat in this regard. Um, while I did feel the blade like moving around and I didn't successfully cut through things, that's really more a measure of sharpness and I could put a keener edge on it and I may well do that in the future. Um, this one has a factory edge on it and Dark Sword Armory isn't necessarily known for turning out items with razor edges on it, so I, I don't think any of that is really new news. What I didn't feel here was a lot of vibration in my hands, which I was pleased by. So I, I noted that the there's some hot spots on the handle, or at least that that pommel could, could get you. I was wearing a glove. I didn't feel that. But given the flex in the blade and how I'm, I'm impacting and thumping into the, into, the item, <laughs> into the bottles, I didn't feel a lot, of, a lot of vibration in my hand, which was another thing that is, is appreciable. So if I put a keener edge on it, the likelihood that I'm going to have a sword that successfully cuts um, and that is comfortable to use is, is much higher. So it's worth noting that, that it didn't want to shake itself out of my hand. That, that was appreciated in terms of dynamics. All right, so that's most of the useful or debatably useful information that I can provide to you about this particular sword. Um, some suggestions that I would throw out for Dark Sword Armory. One is, again, around the pommel to reiterate. There were some bits that were sharp and pointy there. I think there's a way to preserve kind of the design of the sword, which I think is really cool. It has a lot going for this, this particular blade uh, without potentially injuring the user and maybe still being an offensive capability. Uh, one of the ledges is sharp and one of the edges is maybe a little bit too pointy. I like to kind of grab, be able anyway, have an option to grab onto that pommel and here here I couldn't. So finding a way to, to soften that a little bit so that I could grab it with a bare hand and that it would be able to withstand some striking and, and some you know potential shock coming back into my hand. Uh, the cross guard, personally, this is maybe a subjective thing, I would love to see the, the noggle section moved into one plane with the cross guard area and, and have it be one piece. Uh, having the two separate sections doesn't, it just looks off to me and I'd like to see them in one. And I think there's maybe a potential to, to shorten the noggle and not have it clamshell over your hand. That would make it fall in line a little bit with at least what I've seen more commonly on Messers. At the same time, I do kind of like the the fact that my knuckles go underneath it and that it offers a little bit more protection. I, I'm on the fence about if I would want to see that changed or not, um, but I suppose I mentioned that because if the reason the noggle is in the position that it is is due to a manufacturing limitation, I think you could maybe preserve some of the cool dimension but make it shorter and nubbier and kind of not necessarily cover your knuckles entirely. That is not uncommon on Messers and I would rather see that and see something shorter than the longer piece that covers my hand entirely. Personally, if it could be on the same plane as the cross guard and, and shorten uh, the, the, the area that that cross guard area takes up, at least uh, lengthwise or heightwise. There we go. 
Otherwise, I think the cross guard's really cool. Uh, keep the quillions and stuff the, the same. I think it looks I think it looks really awesome and befits the sword and kind of the dimensions and pointy bits and stuff like that. Uh, Blade-wise, I think the main critique or suggestion that I could offer would be to start a little bit thicker and have implement a little bit more taper, distal taper in the blade. Um, it shouldn't flex in kind of the bottom third or in the middle. It should offer a lot more flex in the top third. I think that's more common, or at least that's what I've seen in most of the masters that I've gotten to play with. Um, and for a long blade like this, I think that's what's making it kind of feel a little wiggly and, and not whippy isn't the right word. It's not whippy, but it, it's the tail wagging the dog a little bit. Um, so I think the feeling that I'm getting there is is likely because of where that taper is. And if it could be thicker at the base and taper down uh, more thin at the tip, I think that would likely correct it. I'd also love to see, and it's totally optional, but I'd, I'd love to see fullering instead of the tapering at the spine. Uh, I think the the tapering on the spine is okay here but like some pointed fullers and stuff like that thematically i think would blend in just a little bit more uh with with the messer theme all right sword friends those are my suggestions for improvement and that brings me to the part do i personally think it's worth it or not and the short answer here is no and the, the main reason for that is really the, the flex in the blade that i can bend it and then it flexes kind of more towards the base than towards the tip uh, and then i, I kind of feel the the wiggle when I move it around is really the the deterrent and it's unfortunate because it's it's very nearly a yes a lot of the other things that I complained about the suggestions that I offered for improvement you could address yourself frankly a lot of people are capable of sharpening I don't think you should have to but it's kind of par for the course it seems in this category um, you could take a small file and address or transfer tra chamfer the edges on the pommel so that it wasn't sharp if that bit bothered you and maybe you could overlook the kind of unsightliness of the cross guard because functionally it does what it's supposed to do and it's held together um, so the, the other bits that I've, I've offered in terms of concern I think a person could address but where the blade flexes is not something really feasible for most of us to do at least not for me uh, so for me it would be it would be a no um, but I don't want to confuse that with um, me recommending, say, the cold steel, for example, over it, which is a $400 less expensive item that doesn't come with, with a scabbard. Um, that one also had uh, not necessarily the great, a great edge, but a lot of the other issues that I've addressed with this sword were, were addressed in that cold steel one, with the exception of it bent and it had a heat treatment issue, which is the reason I said, you know, it's a, it's a negative on that one for me as well. Uh, this one, the heat treatment doesn't seem to be in question, and it hasn't been on the other Dark Sword Army items that I've, I've tested. Their swords seem to be heat treated in such a way that they are reliable and good. I think it's just the, the geometry of the blade and how it's ground that really impacts uh, where that flex is and to me it doesn't quite seem to be in the right spot or at least not a spot that I like. Unfortunately, there's not a messer that I can say or at least a Kriegsmesser in this variety that I can point you to and say this is the place to go because the only one that I've tested so far that seems to do all the things the way it's supposed to are, are more expensive. The pieces from Arms and Armor and Lands Connect Emporium all did the things that they were supposed to do but they were they were certainly in a in a different price category over a thousand dollars especially if you want to have a scabbard with them. So um, Unfortunately, I haven't found a budget-conscious Kriegsmesser that seems to do all the things that it's supposed to do well. Uh, the Dark Sword Armory, unfortunately, the, the waggle is the off part for me. If it doesn't bother you, though, then power to you. There's lots of other things that I think you could do on the sword yourself that would augment and make it more comfortable if any of the critiques I've offered were of concern to you as well. Anyway, uh, those are my thoughts. Thank you to Dark Sword Armory for sending this to me. I still think it is a very really cool looking sword. And if any of those improvements are taken, I'm, I'm really eager to see what, what they do with this model because I think there's a ton of potential. I do think it is uniquely cool. Um, just the, there's a lot of design in the in the guard and I think it's, it's just a neat looking sword. And so I'd, I'd like it to be a neat feeling sword as well. And if it did, I think it'd be a really fun package overall. Anyway, uh, that's, that's what I've got. Cheers and thanks for watching. Sword Armory, Nachenbecker, Nachenbacher, Cockknocker, Knochenbrecher. Most approximation, but most, most.